fuck. Anyways, it's time to review some film. Well, we're gonna do this one more time. On the left, you have T-Max 3200. It was introduced in 1988. And on the right, you're gonna have Delta 3200. It was introduced in 1998 to compete directly with T-Max. They are both T-grain, panchromatic, fine grain, continuous tone. They compete with each other, just like the last episode. They're gonna be very similar. And uh, I don't know. Does this ski mask make me... As always, we're gonna go four rounds. Tone, resolution, some sharpness, and of course, grain. Four of them. Cool. Very similar, very, very similar. I think the Kodak, the T-Max, the blacks are a little deeper, a little richer, um, creates a little more contrast. I could have just been due to lighting, user, whatever, multiple things. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna go with three for the T-Max and then on the Delta, I happen to like it just a little bit more. I think there's just a bit more of a range, um, a little bit more pleasing to the eye. So I'm gonna go with a five, three, five. They're both professional grade films. Of course they're gonna be good. You can see everything, even with this really overcast and fogginess and snow and you can see lots, it's great. Uh, 12 stars for each. Sharp, but not too sharp. Six stars each. I like, I like. We did it. We found the grain. Okay, yeah, it's uh, it's very grainy. I mean, it's just kind of gonna happen with this type of film. 3200 is really sensitive and it's kind of, I don't really know how to explain it. It's just, it can be shot 1600, 3200, 64, you know, and it, it's, it's tough. But it's very grainy because you're basically just pushing a film aggressively. Um, in this instance, I like, I like the Delta more. Um, I think the Kodak has just a little, I don't know, there's something about it that I just don't like. I think too, it's so underexposed when you digitally scan, I think there's a little bit of digital noise in the, the T-Max there, so I'm not a big fan of that. Um, so I'm gonna go with 10 stars for the, the T-Max, and once again, Ilford, man, it's just so good. It's just really so good. They know what they're doing. Don't know why, don't know why it took me so long to come around. But yeah, good grain structure, love it, beautiful. Uh, 12 stars. I, uh, I like these films. I don't think I would shoot these films again. I just, I don't really understand why anybody would shoot them. I guess I do, like very specific reasons, or maybe there's people that only shoot this stuff, I don't know. Um, but it's not really for me. I, I just think it's kind of ridiculous, not ridiculous, but to me, if you go like with a, a good 400 speed film, right? Like if you grab HP5 or Delta, mostly HP5, but either one, you can push and pull those all over the place pretty aggressively and get very similar results without having to go out of your way to buy a very expensive roll of 3200 speed film because this stuff's not cheap. Anyways, yeah, I think, yeah, uh, Delta, Delta came out on top, or yeah, Delta came out on top again. Go Ilford, go. I am absolutely an Ilford boy now. So that's cool. Uh, yeah, 
yeah, these uh, all these photos this week were, were quick walks with Jane, just around the neighborhood. I didn't venture too far. Um, I'm in Calgary, Alberta, and with the wind chill, most days we're like minus 39, 42, somewhere in there. Um, yeah, and when it's really, really cold out, it's really, really bright out. There's lots of sun because the clouds, you know, I'm pretty sure they keep the heat in. So it's kind of hard to shoot 32 speed film in bright daylight. So I actually shot both of these rolls yesterday, literally yesterday, um, in a couple hour walk. So going, I thought they were going to be rushed, but honestly, I like, I like some of these photos. Um, I've really just stopped trying to take photos for people and I've just started taking photos for me. And uh, I think, I think it's become more enjoyable for me. So, yeah, sorry, uh, I digress. Let's talk about some photos. Um, if anybody is an OG kind of film photographer, YouTuber, watcher, whatever you want to call it, um, you probably recognize the name Negative Feedback. He's from the UK. He's uh, one of the first well-known film photographers on YouTube. Um, I don't believe he posts anymore, which is kind of sad. I really liked his his content. It was, uh, it was a good change of pace from the, the landscape. Um, anyways, I digress again. If you're an OG, you might remember near the end of his YouTube career, he made a video about his like home community, his hometown, and it was about lost cat missing signs. Um, and so this is my little homage to him. I've, uh, I've been thinking about doing it for a while, um, and I'm glad I kind of left it till a day where I just like couldn't go out and shoot. So I just kind of walked around my neighborhood and found these different signs. There's a lot more, but these are the ones I found on just the walks I was taking. So yeah. Um, Side note, can someone please explain to me why people let their cats roam free in a city? Like, Calgary is really close to the Rocky Mountains um, and there's just animals everywhere. They're very habitualized, like coyotes are habitualized everywhere. They're everywhere in this city. Like, I don't know. I, uh, I don't wanna say those cats are not coming back, but one of these signs says missing since April. That's, uh, yeah. Anyways, if you have an answer for why people do it, please let me know. And I get, I, I get, like, if you're in the country, like, I grew up on an acreage, so it's like, we had cats that lived outside for, like, mice and rodents and stuff. They disappeared sometimes, you know? Like, it's just the way it is. Coyotes, owls, it's just how it goes. But uh, in the city, I really don't get it. It's, uh, it's a conundrum for me. So if you can help me out, that'd be great. Um... Bunch of Jane. I, I <laughs> like I said a bit earlier, I've really started to make this connection with my camera. Um, I think for a long time. I've owned a camera since I was like 13, over half my life. I've always enjoyed photography, I've always enjoyed taking photos. Um, but I never really knew why, why I like taking photos, what I was doing with them. And recently I've just this, come to this kind of like aha moment where my camera serves two purposes. It's a tool to keep me present and it's a tool to preserve my memory. I'm ADHD, so being present and remembering things are very difficult for me. Um, and with coming to that conclusion, I've really just like committed to that. And so I've just kind of started taking photos of Jane and reflections and I don't know, whatever the heck I want, it doesn't matter. And I feel like my photography's really grown quite a bit in a short time by just Taking photos of what I like taking photos and not trying to impress anybody. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Some of my favorite photographers just like photograph their life. You know, their cat, their wife, their weights on the, like uh, going on the train, just waiting at the train station, taking photos of crows and ravens and stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, I love Jane. I hope you love Jane. Just some random ones, you know, just walking around town, finding some reflections of ourselves. Um, I've gotten oddly into taking self-portraits in an attempt to make thumbnails. I don't know. I don't know. I just enjoy them. It's a... Uh, I don't take portraits, so it's been a good way for me to learn a little bit of portraiture. I, uh... I need to upgrade my kit, though, I think. Like, I want to get a long, um... cable release so that I can set better shots up instead of just looking in the mirror and trying to use the same reflections. I have an interesting bathroom. There's like six mirrors in there when you open them all up and you can get really crazy reflections, but yeah, I want the camera to not be in the photo, if you know what I mean. So yeah, there's some vanity shots. Um, yeah, I think that's all I got for you guys this week. It was, uh, it was an interesting week with the cold. 
Like I, I shoot every day of my life, but when it's minus 39, 40, cameras are gonna break. It's, it's just honestly not even worth it. But I snuck out there yesterday when it was like pretty nice out, so it worked out. Anyways, um, the next video coming out will be about my grandpa's camera. Oh, hold on. It's gonna be about this thing. It's a Chinon CE4 with a Kickstar 28 2.8. Yeah, I picked it up and I was playing around with it the other day and realized that actually the, the meter and everything works. So, yeah, I put some batteries in there. I fired off a roll of HP5. Um, it's all developed and I'm just working on it now. I wanted to get this out and stay on track and on routine, so, yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know what films I'm gonna do next. I really don't. I, uh, I don't wanna shoot color film, I'll be honest. It's just, doesn't really fit into my repertoire of uh, photography and I feel like it will just be like a waste of time and money for myself to shoot a bunch of film that I don't necessarily care for. I don't know. It's, 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 a, it's a balance between trying to do what I want to do and trying to be a content creator and being interesting for you guys to watch. So I don't know. If you guys want me to shoot color film, you're going to have to push me to shoot color film. You know, So jump in those comments, jump on those likes, give me a follow, whatever you got to do. But as of right now, I'm gonna source out different black and white films and keep doing that. Sorry, alarm went off and I read an email over there. <laughs> ADHD things. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm also, um, I tested out my RB. I gotta develop that role because I wanna use, I digress. I'll talk about the RB later. You'll see this video soon. And then, uh, yeah, go from there. Anyways, love you, bye. Love you, bye. It's very, very cold out. It's freezing out here. It's been a very cold week of photography. Uh, anyways, it's time to review some film.